Okay, so that's in 25. Um, so flats. Flat will lower the pitch. Um, so on the piano keyboard, we have all of our white keys, of course. And then going down a half step, that will become the flat of that note. So B becomes B flat, A becomes A flat, G becomes G flat, E becomes E flat, E becomes E flat. What does F become? F becomes F flat. Of course, this one's F flat. Pretty weird, right? And C also becomes C flat. Those two are white keys, which is just like kind of annoying and kind of weird, but luckily they barely show up. Usually you'll see B flat, A flat. Sometimes you'll see G flat. Sometimes you'll see, well, E flat's pretty common. D flat, less common. B flat's the most common. Um, when saying flat in its name, you do the letter name first and then the flat after it. Um, just like that. You can try drawing them. Yes, just like a B. Um, identify your flats. Draw your flats. Um, Etc. Okay, and then the opposite. If we go up a half step, we get our sharp. So C, C sharp, D sharp, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, B e sharp, E, E sharp. Of course, this would be an E sharp if you're in like some awful key and your brain is really hurting. Um, and this C, uh, B sharp, rather. Honestly, the one I see the most, I think, is C flat. I, I don't really see this B sharp. This E sharp. Um, luckily, you usually just see the black keys with the sharp or the flat names. Um, so yeah, watch for C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, F sharp, and C sharp being the most common. Um, practice drawing a hashtag. Hashtag this is easy. Uh, and then sometimes you have this symbol, which is basically telling you to cancel the effect of the flat or the sharp. Um, so maybe your key signature has a bunch of sharps in it, maybe it has a C sharp, but in this measure they don't want you to play C sharp. Um, they want you to play the white key, C. So uh, they would put the natural symbol, which means you just play the natural note. So any of the, any of the white keys would be the natural notes. Um, all of those flats and sharps and then naturals are called accidentals um, because they don't fit in the key signature. Uh, the key signature usually just tells you what you play and then sometimes you have accidental notes and it's really easy just to spot all the accidentals. Here they are. Uh, B flat, a C sharp there, B flat, and then a B natural. In this case you want to change the note. Um, and then you actually hold the flat for the whole measure. So this B flat stays a B flat, this C sharp stays a C sharp. This one stays flat until something tells it to change, which is either a natural symbol or the bar line, right? So the bar line would tell me, oh, now I'm gonna play B as it's supposed to be, no pun intended. Um, C becomes C as it's supposed to be because there's no accidental label. The accidental just lasts for one measure. Do you see now? Um, and then of course if it's tied you just you're holding the note so you wouldn't change the note while you're holding it that would be weird um, so it just continues on the same uh, flat or accidental or sharp okay practice identifying hopefully this isn't so hard um, this part I think is actually I don't know I was thinking about is it contrived to make you just copy down this melody um, but I think it actually is pretty good because there are some repeats in this, so you have to sort of look carefully and identify, let's see, there's two measures that are the same, and so those will repeat. Um, and then later on in the piece, there's a chunk of three measures that you play twice, so make sure you put those three measures in the right spot. Um, and of course, you know, the last measure is always the last measure, so maybe you could be clever and work from there. Anyway, um, I was just thinking about how convenient it would be if we introduced the concepts of half steps and whole steps because uh, they sort of come up a lot. Pretty useful. Um, they're sort of the, the building blocks of, of scales, really. Um, and you can see it's so easily on a keyboard, which is why I just love teaching um, on pianos because you can just see all the notes right there and you can see um, where the funny notes are too, right? E and, and F have those like, you know, there's no black key in between there. No black key in between B and C. Those are the half steps. So a whole is going to be two notes in between and then uh, a half is just going to be one note in between. And you can 
Oop. I lose my sound. There we go. You can actually hear the difference too if you listen. Versus. Right. Oops. Um, it, uh, there's a, a very famous movie which has that motif. So I can help you remember uh, what a half step sounds like. Um, right, so um, half steps, whole steps. Uh, and then when the notes have the same sound but a different name, Right, so this first black key, we call it a uh, D flat the first time around, and then we call it a C sharp the second time around. It's actually both notes. Um, those are just enharmonic namings, names for them. Um, it's basically like a homophone, right? You know, word that sounds the same, but has a different spelling. Um, same thing here. Um, and the spelling just matters because of the scales. Um, when we do a scale, we always want to do the scale in alphabetical order. And we don't want to repeat a letter because that would be weird. Um, so because of that rule, sometimes you end up with, you know, a C sharp, sometimes you end up with a D flat, um, sometimes you end up with a C double sharp, and then you're like, no, why am I playing this piece? I should have picked an easier piece. Um, okay, now you'll identify the interval here, um, so you'll have to first figure out what the note names are, write down the note names, and then look at your handy dandy keyboard right here, and see what the space is between the two notes. Let's do the first one together. Luckily, I remember, but if you draw a face, you'll see this is an F. And then remember that they just go in alphabetical order, so after F is G. So we got an F and a G right here. I look at my keyboard. Looks like that's a whole step because there's a, a black key in between. Um, so then I would write F, G, and a W for whole step. Um, carrying on here, right? This looks like a B. Um, every good boy deserves fudge. Um, and then, of course, after B is C. Don't be distracted by the letters here because obviously there's no J or K. This is my keyboard. Um, okay. Cool, cool. Um, and then once you stack them all up together, we call that the chromatic scale um, that has all of the notes in it, um, at least all of the, you know, notes on a traditional keyboard. There's actually notes in between that you get sometimes in some, some music. Um, like in blues, if you bend the note on your guitar, you can get a note in between all of these. Okay, um, great. I haven't practiced playing my computer keyboard very much, but yeah, I should. I could play that better if I tried. <laughs> but I'm not going to waste my time practicing on the computer keyboard. I got a real one. Um, okay, so draw out a scale. Good practice. Um, well, you get to do it on the last one, so you might as well just do it on the last one the first time. Um,. And then, uh, usually the scales we use don't use all of the notes. You know, that would be kind of crazy if you had your piece using all of these notes. Oops, recording. All right, using all of the notes is kind of messy, especially doing it like that. Um, so usually we just use scales. Uh, and the first one, major scale. I'm on C major, just starting on C and going up um, all the white keys. It's so easy. And the really nice part is you can see the pattern of the major scale just by looking at the white keys. Right, we have a whole step, a whole step, here's your half step, and then a whole step, a whole step, a whole step, and a half step. Um, so there's the pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Just memorize that. Um, you know, two, half, three, half. Um, and then you're good to go. Um, like, honestly, like sometimes I'm playing solos on the, on the guitar in a scale I don't know very well, and I just remember this pattern. I'm like, I know where my 
home note is, and then I just go up two frets, or I go up one fret, or I go up another two frets, and I go up another two frets, um, and then I make up a solo on the spot, and everyone thinks it's impressive, but really I'm just doing whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Um, Great. There's uh, four notes. Uh, the whole whole half pattern is called a tetrachord. And you'll see there's actually two tetrachords connected by a whole step. Um, so the first one, uh, C, D, E, F. And then the second one being G, E, A, B, C. Whole, 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 half. Whole, 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 half. Um, and then the whole step in between. Cool. Um, you should just do them all. Um, yeah, draw the chromatic scale, ascending, descending, draw the C major scale. And perhaps even more importantly than be writing this is, is to go to a keyboard, plop both your hands down and, and just play the scale. You can just put a, both your pinkies on C. And then you just do one finger at a time, really easy. Um, yeah, but better to do it, you know, nice and even and smooth, and then be funny with it. Okay, great, have fun.